Hey everybody, I'm Team here with my father's Jaime Garcia, Reserva Especial. And you're watching Cigars Daily. I want to invite you to get more out of all our videos now when you watch them on CigarsDailyPlus.com where you can even leave your rating for cigars right next to mine under each review video. As you work your way through the world of cigars, you're going to hear a lot of names of these like multi-generational cigar making families and certainly with my father's cigars, there's no exception there. You'll hear a lot of this Don Pepin Garcia who really put the foundations down for everything that my father has become today and it's a lot that my father has become. They're a massive brand, but his boy Jaime Garcia has been blending a lot of the my father proper blends and so having a Jaime Garcia Reserva Especial makes a really good bit of sense. But this broadleaf wrap blend with Nicaraguan binders and fillers sure sounds a lot like a lot of other cigars out there. This thing actually sets itself apart for me with one small fact. People are buying these and smoking them faster than most other Connecticut broadleaf blends in my humidor. And so my big question for this guy is what is it about this cigar that causes it to be set apart? Does it have some special flavor or something that makes the experience even better? And the only way to find out is with a cut in the light. All right, the beginning here is it's pretty good. I think that there's a lot going on, but let me sort of unpack for you what I'm getting. So the first thing is really, really rich chocolate note. Even as the flame of the lighter is still on the foot of the cigar, I get nice chocolate coming through, which for Broadleaf is something I really enjoy. I'm liking a chocolate note when I can find it, and it's pretty common with Broadleafs. But at the same time, on the retrohale, where I expect to get black pepper, almost none with this blend. And for a cigar that's got that Broadleaf, I think it's a USA Broadleaf on the outside, Nicaraguan binders and fillers, I think some pepper is to be expected. No substantial pepper here. Also, a really brilliant floral note through the retrohale that I like a lot. And this is very early on for this cigar, but also has a really nice coffee finish coming out of it. So sort of a simple flavor profile, like it's your chocolate and a little bit of a floral note with no pepper. That's got room to grow, but also that finish early on is... It, I don't typically get that. I find finishes sort of come later on in the cigar. So right here at the outset, it's kind of a toss up for me. I see some really good stuff. I see some places to improve. Let's take it in the first third and see what we get. So the flavor develops here, but still not your run of the mill Connecticut Broadleaf blend, which whether that's a good thing or not sort of remains to be seen. Right now, I've got like a really strange division of flavor between the tongue and through the retrohale. So on the tongue, still getting chocolate and now coffee in addition to that coffee finish. But those two flavor notes pretty much sit there while the retrohale gives even more. Still a nice floral note there, really beautiful raisiny sweetness comes through the retrohale. And the other massive note I'm really enjoying on this is graham crackers here in the first third. I haven't found a lot of cigars that give that note up at least until the second third or middle of the cigar and this is a creamy smoke the smoke itself tastes creamy it's got a thick texture to it it's just for a broadleaf blend it's not as punchy not as sharp of a flavor not bitter or biting or spicy or peppery it's very smooth and there's plenty to taste at least at this point here now it certainly has a chance to get better balance in the second third but i you know i'm getting some of this on the tongue and just some of it on the retro hail and there's not a ton of crossover here so i'm intrigued to see what comes out of this next i feel like i don't know what to expect let's jump into the second third and see where it takes us Okay, I'm out of the second third and I'm just retrohaling too much. Like I get that sting in my nostrils from too much smoke coming through there. And I tend to do that with this cigar because the retrohale gives so much. And there's no transition of flavor through the second third. Right now I'm actually pretty well through the second third, getting ready to go into that final third. And 
flavor here is like dead on accurate to what it was in the first. So still really nice chocolate and coffee on the tongue. Amazing graham cracker and sweetness through the retro hail. It just keeps me coming back for every next puff. Very creamy, but I'll say that second, third, like best part of the flavor hasn't happened because it's still well balanced like it was in the first third, which is good for consistency although it took a second for that flavor to sort of come to life. So it'll lose a point or two there. But overall, I'd say right now, what I'm seeing about this cigar that I really enjoy, the thing that sets it apart is that really beautiful chocolate note. That thing is by itself a really amazing feature of the flavor of this. Now take a look at the wrapper on this with me. The Jaime Garcia Reserva Especial comes with these very oily, soft, and silky feeling Connecticut broadleaf wrappers, and that's not very common. These things can be very rugged. It's a very thick leaf, but these are smooth and supple, if I may say so. Also, my father has given it a beautiful presentation with the Jaime Garcia band on it, a classy and understated sort of elegance here that I'm enjoying a lot, but the flavor is what keeps me coming back to this thing. So I'm gonna head into the final third here to see sort of what we get. At this point, that coffee finish is still nice and strong. And so that I'm sure will hang in there because that's always there. But can we hold on to that sort of that chocolate and the sweetness in the final third? That'll be the thing I'm kind of hoping for. But let's take it to that, see what this thing takes us and what kind of score it gets. Now this thing is treating me real good. The burn's not great here in the final third. I could touch it up, probably won't. I've got a few puffs left on this, but right now the flavor on this holds on so much stronger than other Connecticut Broadleaf blends that I've reviewed on the channel. Flavor-wise here, I'm getting really nice still chocolate, graham cracker as a note here in the final third, and coffee. All three of those in great balance, even a little bit of sweetness kind of tagging along here, gives me a beautiful profile, better than I've actually gotten out of some like other Connecticut Broadleaf blends in the second third, sort of at the best part of it. This thing bangs along and shows me exactly why people are loving the Jaime Garcia as one of my father's most popular cigars. My final smoking time on this has been an hour and 19 minutes on the Robusto size and my score came out to a 91. It was a bit of a weird, rocky start with this blend, with the flavor being sort of divided between the tongue and the retro hail. But in the second third, or really in the first third actually, and through the rest of the cigar, that flavor got so full and so rich, it didn't leave me wanting for just about anything. But of course here, the big thing that matters and what we really care about is what you guys think about this. So if you've had the Jaime Garcia from My Father's Cigars, please drop a comment down below and let everybody know what you think about it and check this video out on cigarsdailyplus.com where you can leave your rating for this right next to mine under the review video. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Tim signing off for Cigars Daily and I will see you in the comments.